Hi, everyone. Welcome to the College Essay Guy Virtual College Road Trip. This is going to be a great virtual fair, so excited for you all to join us. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A button. You're welcome to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are more sessions. This is one of many college presentations being offered, so feel free to sign up for more at the same place where you registered for this one. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash college essay guy. We are currently in session A1 where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first representative from the University of Dundee. Thank you very much. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start sharing my screen. Uh, hopefully it comes up great. There we are. Hopefully I can get getting about the buttons here. Um, so yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm Joe McKinney, and I'm uh, the International Officer for the Americas from uh, the University of Dundee. Um, I thought in the quick six minutes that I have that I would give a brief overview of Scottish education, um, which I know that my other colleagues here from Scotland will do anyway, um, and then give you a little bit about the University of Dundee. So let's hope uh, my presentation goes forward. So as I said, I want to talk about uh, Scotland first. Why choose Scotland as a destination to study in? Um, there's a whole host of different reasons. Um, for one, uh, it's an absolutely stunning country. If you've never had the chance to come and visit, I would 100% recommend it is absolutely stunning. Um, we have some great things going on, especially for students who are here um, that, that want to study here. Um, we have loads of different sort of festivals. Um, there's a thriving arts and culture scene. Uh, we have a really, really long history um, and rich and, and sort of uh, colourful history. Um, and of course, people in Scotland, I would argue, are the friendliest people in the world. Um, but again, you would need to come here um, to see that. Um, but one of the biggest things and best things about the Scottish uh, being a student in Scotland is the flexible degree structure. Um, and it's actually, it's very similar to the liberal arts system. Um, and it's um, actually the liberal arts system was based off of the Scottish education system. Um, and so was the French as well. So we must be doing something right in terms of education. Dundee, um, the city itself is quite small. Uh, we have about 150,000 people that live here, um, but about one in seven, so just over 14% are students. So it's very much a student city um, in Dundee. There's two universities. So there's University of Dundee, which I'm representing today, but there's also Aberté University as well. So very much a student city. Things that happen in the city are for students um, and it's a great place to be. Um, we win a whole host of different accolades, um, like one of the best places to live. And we're also the sunniest city um, in Scotland. We actually have more hours of sunshine on average than England. Um, so it's, it's an excellent place um, to be. There's a couple of things you might not know about Dundee. We are nicknamed the City of Discovery, um, and we did, in fact, discover everything on the screen right now. So, in fact, the LCD screen that you're looking through right now was invented in Dundee. Um, and another big one from us is the gaming industry. So you may not have known that Grand Theft Auto was also developed um, and, and made in Dundee. Um, probably not our proudest achievement, but it's also a very good game. Uh, also, the adhesive postage stamp, ATM machines, aspirin, radar, marmalade, so many different things um, were invented in Dundee, um, but I bet you didn't know that. 
we have a range of different subjects at the university. Um, as you can see on the bottom right hand side there, uh, we can do things from art and design um, all the way through um, to uh, law, architecture, uh, medicine, dentistry, life sciences, science and engineering, a whole, whole range of different subjects. If you do want to find out more, um, what you can do is scan the QR code. Um, this will take you to our prospectus page and you'll get to see all the different information um, about different subjects that you may be interested in um, that we have to offer at the University of Dundee. We are a, a good university, I suppose. I wouldn't say that we're a bad university um, because I get paid to say we're good, but we genuinely are. Um, we're top 20 in the UK by most uh, league tables, and we're also top 250 in the world. Um, one of the best things that we pride ourselves on is our student satisfaction. Um, we have been in the top 15 in the UK for the National Student Survey um, for the past five years. Um, and that survey is actually taken by students, so we don't coerce them, we don't pay them for anything. This is their point of view, um, and they consistently vote us in the top 15. Um, so we must be doing something right, and students do have a great time uh, when they study here at Dundee. Here is an aerial picture of our campus. Um, we are a campus-based university and we're a city centre campus. So we're about five minutes walk away from the city centre of Dundee um, and we're based just slightly to the west um, of the city centre. We have everything that you can imagine on campus and um, everything that you need is here. Uh, we have the lecture theatres, we have the accommodation, we have some sports facilities, we even have a shop there as well. Um, so we always make the joke that you don't even need to leave the campus if you don't want to, but of course we do recommend that you get out and about and you explore um, the rest of the city and the rest of Scotland as well. At any one time on our campus during normal times, we would have about 12 and a half thousand students on campus. So that makes us a medium sized university for the UK. Um, but we have around about 17,000 students in total. And one of the greatest things about our campus is our students union. There's five floors. So there's definitely so many things there um, for you to get involved in if you want to come to the, the campus. But luckily enough, I think I'm getting um, timed off here. Um, but I have another QR code just because I love them. Um, if you scan that QR code, that will give you um, my details, um, exactly what you can see on screen there. So my number um, and also my email address. So please feel free to contact me after this if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. The next representative is from University of Edinburgh. Hi, everybody. My name is Hilary Sementina, and I am the West Coast representative for the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, and I am based in California. So Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland, but although it's the capital, it's pretty small with only about 500,000 people. And students make up about 15% of the city's population. There are actually four universities in Edinburgh, but the University of Edinburgh is the largest. Edinburgh is a very compact and walkable city. Um, so most students get around by walking, riding a bike, taking a bus. We have a great public transportation system. So there's definitely no need for you to have a car in order to get around to our university buildings and around the city. The university itself was founded in 1583, making it one of Scotland's ancient universities, and we're currently ranked 16th in the world. So we are a large research-based institution with over 80% of our academic staff actively involved in research, and that is across multiple subject areas. As Scotland's largest university, we are very open to the world and welcoming of students from across the globe. We have about 45,000 students at our university from over 160 different countries. So 41% of our student population comes from outside of the United Kingdom. And you can see on the slide here that we're very proud of the fact that we are the number one destination in the UK for US and Canadian students. 
We have a lot of societies and events around our campus that celebrate and support our diverse community. Um, we also have a very diverse staff community with 30% of our staff coming from outside of the UK as well. So our university is divided into three colleges, but that's not to say we're a collegiate system like Oxford or Cambridge. It's just how we structure our academic disciplines. So the largest is the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences. That's where you'll find subjects such as business, law, architecture, English literature, history, etc. And then we have the College of Science and Engineering with subjects like computer science or informatics, engineering, mathematics, chemistry, geosciences. And then we have medicine and veterinary medicine, which is the smallest of the three colleges. And this is where our medical and vet students study. So as a large institution, you would expect we have a lot of degree programs for you to choose from. There's over 390 undergraduate degrees. So hopefully we offer subjects that you're interested in. And our academic year is divided into two semesters. We have semester one starts in September and finishes in December. And then we have semester two, which runs from January until May. So most undergraduate study in Scotland is typically four years long, and this is slightly different from the rest of the UK. So in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, most undergraduate degrees are three years in length. So because of our four-year degree program, it means you have flexibility and choice in the subjects that you study, particularly in your first two years. Then once you get to your third year, that's where you really specialize and focus on your major subject of study. And at Edinburgh, many of our degree programs offer the opportunity for you to do a year abroad during your third year as well. So we really encourage independent self-guided thinking at Edinburgh. You will most likely have fewer contact hours per week than you may in the United States, but we expect students to make study groups with their peers, go to the library and do independent research. And I just wanna highlight that our degrees are internationally recognized. So you don't have to have any concerns about if you go to Edinburgh um, and do your undergraduate degree, it will be recognized when you return to the United States, the equivalent to an undergraduate degree in the US. Obviously your academic life is important, but so is your time outside of the classroom. And in September, we have a welcome week, which is the week before classes begin. And it's when we have orientation and welcome events and activities for new students to get acquainted with the campus and the city. We also have over 290 student groups and societies, which I believe is um, more than any other UK institution. These range from the serious, like the debate team and Amnesty International, to the maybe not so serious, like the Harry Potter Society or the Chocolate Lover Society. And we also have many sports clubs that you could join and you can play sports at an elite level on one of our university teams or very casually on an intramural team. One great thing about studying at Edinburgh is that international undergraduate students are guaranteed university housing in their first year as long as you apply by the deadline. And we have over 9,000 residential rooms for you to choose from with a range of preferences and budgets. And on campus, we have all the facilities you would expect, like a counseling service, health center, career service, et cetera, that provide all your health and well being and support. So now that you've decided this all sounds fantastic, I'm definitely applying to Edinburgh. That's great. We welcome applications from well qualified students. You apply to our undergraduate degrees through the Universities and College Admission Service, or UCAS, which is like the UK's version of the Common App. With your application, you'll submit your qualifications, a personal statement and reference, and we have specific entry requirements for US students. So if you'd like to know more, you can scan the QR code on the screen and also speak online with our student ambassadors and do a virtual campus tour of the city and university. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all to please uh, submit those using the Q&A button. Our representatives are here and available to answer any questions you have. And we encourage you to also include the school name. Our next representative is from University of Roehampton. Thank you so much, Catherine. 
And thank you guys for being here this evening, for having us and um, coming to listen to us on our road trip. My name is Amanda Lundberg, and I'm an international officer for the University of Roehampton in London, England. Um, and I'm, like I said, really glad you can join us tonight. So we're considered London's campus university, uh, which is unique amongst London universities. We're situated on a 54 acre beautiful Parkland campus uh, in Southwest London. And we've been providing education for over 180 years now. Um, and also as a fun fact, we were one of the first universities in the UK to educate women, which we're really proud of. Um, we've been ranked as one of the top 10 universities in London and you can get a little peek here at some of the Regency architecture you can find on campus. So we have a really diverse student population um, with only 9,000 students enrolled. We're fairly small, um, but uh, of whom we have 28% of our students that are from outside of the UK and represent 146 different nationalities. So you're not alone as an international student. Um, also, 93% uh, of our students are in employment or further study after graduation. So great careers prospects there. And we offer seven different academic departments. Um, and of course, being in one of the world's cultural hubs, you'll have tons to see and visit um, with, with lots of um, museums and lots of other things that you will only enrich your experience with us. And then lastly, we've been ranked as a fifth amongst London universities for student satisfaction. So you can see here our proximity to central London. Um, we're in that sort of southwest corner, just down the river from some of the popular tourist attractions in central. Um, we're also very near Wimbledon where the annual tennis match happens, um, as, as well as being across from one of London's eight royal parks. So very green space. Um, we have also have some fantastic public transportation, of course, um, and then you'll have a huge variety of buses and trams and trains and tubes and lots of things to be able to get around. And we also do have, of course, a free university um, bus service that will start going into central London this fall. So you may not even have to pay for travel when you're going into central. Um, as you can see just from the last few slides, our campus is really lush and green, um, but being so close to central London, you get the best of both worlds. You have that um, green space as well as the busy city life. So best of both there. Um, our university is comprised of four historic colleges. So um, similar to kind of Oxford and Cambridge, but more like we like to sort of equate it more to like Harry Potter because it's more fun. Um, each of our colleges offer loads of great amenities such as sports, sports facilities, gyms, um, cafes and social spaces. Um, and we like to think um, that our colleges provide a, a fantastic community within the community at University of Rehoboth. We're very much a research-led university. We're the number one modern university in London for quality of research um, and the most research-intensive modern university in the UK. And around 66% of our research is rated um, internationally excellent. And some of our departments um, are rated um, as 100% of the research is rated as internationally excellent. So you can see here are seven academic departments. Um, our degrees are shorter than US degrees typically. So you could have um, a bachelor's and a master's degree in the time it takes you to do one here in the US. Um, and then you can also choose, um, th this is not a full list of our courses. This is kind of a condensed, condensed version for you tonight, um, but you can choose a single subject or you can combine subjects together depending on what you wanna do. And with no GE requirements, the uh, UK degrees are academically challenging, but very rewarding and specialized. So making an application is really simple. You can either apply through UCAS, um, like my colleague said, it's similar to the Common App, or you can also apply um, through our free online application if you've already used up all five choices for, for some reason. Uh, we do have rolling admissions, which means there's no hard deadlines to apply. And we also offer the opportunity to start in either January or September. So a quick look at our undergraduate entry requirements here. Um, usually look at between a 2.8 to 3.0, depending on subject area. We are test optional and have been since 2019. So kind of leading, leading the way there through the pandemic. Um, some of our subjects currently have subject requirements, but we are reviewing those currently. So get in touch if you're doing life sciences or English or creative writing. We can also accept IB and other curriculum if you're doing something other than the diploma. Um, and we do accept transfer students as well. So in terms of overall cost, I, I would say we're very affordable, especially considering you're saving a year of tuition. Um, we have numerous scholarships, as you can see, and you're looking at around a total cost of around $35,000, including tuition and living expenses. 
And then we also um, do accept FAFSA federal loans as well to help pay for, for all of this. Uh, as far as accommodation goes, we do guarantee housing for our, our US and international students. We offer different room types. So we have um, blocks for first year students, blocks for continuing students, some for postgrads. So wherever you're at, we have a room for you. Um, and it's very affordable, especially for London living, which is, uh, tends to be a little bit on the, on the pricey side. Um, but we also have, all of our rooms are single, single bedrooms. So you're not sharing with anyone else, but you can choose between whether to share um, uh, bathroom facilities or to have your own private ensuite bathroom. That's just a little overall view of the accommodation. Um, we have a lot going on on campus, as I'm sure you would expect. Uh, you'll have a fantastic social experience no matter what you're into. You can see some of the things we offer here. Um, but one thing that I really want to kind of end on here is that 59% of our students um, are first in their families to go to university. Um, and our ethos is based on social justice, which we're really proud of. And we really have a, a focus of putting everyone on an equal playing field. I'm going to skip through the sports and to my final slide with lots of QR codes. So uh, please do scan any of these or take a screenshot and um, get in touch if you have any questions at all. I'd be happy to help. Thanks so much. Thank you. Again, so much great information. Um, our next representative is from the University of Essex. Awesome. Thank you very much, Catherine, and good uh, evening from the United Kingdom, everybody. My name is Tim. I'm the International Officer for North America at the University of Essex, and I am going to explain in the next six minutes why you should choose Essex as a study destination. I thought it would be best to start with, um, first of all, sort of delineating why England as, as a study location is, is um, such a popular choice, I suppose, for students from, from the United States. Um, so universities in uh, England, also Wales and Northern Ireland, for the most part, have what's known as an early degree specialism, meaning your bachelor's degree will be three years in duration and all three years will be focused on the subject that you want to be studying, that is, that you want to be studying. So that is to say that um, we don't really do general ed as, as part of our as part of our degree. So students will be able to become an expert in their chosen academic area a lot earlier. Um, tuition fees um, are broadly very competitive with, with options in the US, particularly when compared to um, to out of state or private institutions. So in the United Kingdom, we have one or two private universities, but for the most part, really universities are sort of publicly funded or sort of quasi funded between public and, um, and government funds. Um, on top of that, um, UK universities, the vast majority of us will um, would be authorized to certify, certify, certify applications for federal direct loans and private loans. Um, we also accept veterans benefits and have a wide range of international scholarships available. Applications are made through a very simple application portal, which is known as UCAS. Um, students will have a student visa, which is now known as the student visa route. And one of the really cool things that's been introduced this year is that once students have graduated, they'll be able to stay and live and work in the United Kingdom for two years after they graduate um, at any level. So they don't need to have a working sponsor or a graduate sponsor. They can stay and live and work in the UK um, pretty much freely after they after they graduate for a couple of years. So if you enjoyed your time in the UK or if you wanted to, to work on that English accent, then you'd be able to do so. Now, why is it that US students will choose Essex? Um, it's um, one of the best part of my jobs, I think, is, is getting to meet the sort of a the really diverse mix of students from the US who come and, and study with us. Um, so each year we'll have between 20 to 30 undergraduate students from the US and about 70 postgraduate students. And they all come to Essex for entirely different reasons. Now, we're particularly famous for our volleyball and basketball programs um, in, uh, at, at the University of Essex. And so we recruit many students, particularly NCAA athletes um, from postgraduate level. From undergraduate level, um, students will be choosing us well, for, for a number of different reasons. One of um, our main sort of um, grabs, I suppose, is our acting school, which is known as East 15. This is located in Loughton, which is on the tube line in London. Um, and it's one of one of the most competitive acting schools in the United Kingdom. It's ranked first for drama in the UK, and they've got courses in acting and physical theater and stage combat. Um, it's the only non-American school in the world to be recognized by IRTA, and we audition every year in the US, usually in, in California and New York each year. We've also got an incredibly strong reputation for social science. So we were the first university in the 
in Europe to approach human rights as an academic discipline and have a worldwide reputation in that. Uh, and we're also 29th in the world for politics and international studies, um, which is kind of core to our foundation as a university. Now, in true six by six fashion, I am going to try and get through very, six very quick points as to why you should study at Essex. First, we are location. We're based in the southeast of the United Kingdom, located very close to London, all within uh, all within an hour. Um, usually about 42 minutes on the train to central London and we're campus universities. Colchester is the UK's oldest recorded town, which is the location of the university. Um, and it's um, a, an old Roman town. So when the Romans came over to the UK, they first landed in Colchester. And in fact, it was the capital in the UK for a very brief moment before Boudicca moved it over to London. And we've got a mix of beaches and cities and towns and villages. So students have everything. Um, our academic teaching is very strong. We've got a very good reputation. So we were, uh, we were ranked gold in the Teaching Excellence Framework, um, which is the highest ranking of teaching that a university can gain in the UK. Um, we've got an interdisciplinary approach and we've got a wide range of subjects, well over 300 subjects which students can choose to study from an undergraduate level. Third would be our student life. Um, we've got a, a, a very socially conscious student body at the University of Essex. And that's one of my favourite things about working at the university, particularly as we're so strong for politics and human rights um, and sociology and those and those areas and um, we've got a large vibrous campus community and um, we've got a theatre on each one of our campus we've got an on-campus theatre we've got our sport arena which is 1400 seater arena for our basketball and volleyball teams um, which is usually a very uh, good social event every Wednesday we've got over 20 restaurants three bars we've got an award-winning nightclub on campus we've got an excellent gym we've got a climbing wall um, we've got a frisbee golf course which hosted the the world frisbee golf championships a couple of years ago America came fourth incidentally on that um, and we guarantee our economy Accommodation. And as with most uh, UK universities, accommodation is um, guaranteed um, and students get their own room in the UK so you don't share a room. Fourth would be cost effective, which I have mentioned before. Because our degrees are three years uh, in duration, students are already saving a year on study. We have competitive fees and we allow for um, student loans um, from the US um, to be utilised at our university and we have a range of scholarships available being our employability so we have a wide range of placement opportunities 91 percent of our undergraduate students are in employment or further study within six months um, we built in employability modules into each one of our undergraduate degrees and we've got really cool programs which students can learn things for free alongside their degree so we've got um, data science for all and language for all languages for all where students can learn um, modules in data science and languages alongside their degree absolutely free my final slide is our global community and my favorite part about the university um, over 140 nationalities represented at the university and around 40% of our students are from outside of the UK. So we have students from all over the world, which really adds um, to an amazing learning experience as well as some fantastic cultural activities and societies on campus. That's everything from myself. My email is there. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. And you fit all six in there. So that's even better. That's great. Thank you. Um, before we jump into our last two representatives um, or two presenters, um, just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to so feel free to submit those using the Q&A button. Um, there's been some great questions coming in recently, so please keep them coming. Our representatives are here and available to answer your questions. And if you have a specific question, to also note the school name. Our next representative is from the University of Stirling. Thanks, Catherine. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ali Clark. I'm Head of Student Recruitment at the University of Stirling. Um, I probably don't need to give you an introduction to studying in Scotland because Joe has helpfully done that already when he covered the University of Dundee. So um, I'm just going to focus on the university itself. So obviously it's based in the it's based in Scotland, a bit like Dundee and also like Edinburgh, which we've covered tonight. Um, it's a campus based university, a purpose built campus based university, and it's a medium sized university with about 14,000 students. But we have over 120 different nationalities represented both in our student body but also in our staff as well. Um, what are we famous for? Well, we're pretty much famous for sport. We're Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. And in 2020, we were also named the UK Sports University um, of the Year, but I'll come on to the sports facilities um, a little bit later on. 
got a really high ranking in terms of national uh, of student satisfaction. So there's a, a survey that takes place every year and it's voted for by students about student experience, about learning, teaching, etc. Um, and that's the National Student Survey, and we're consistently in the top 20 for that. Um, another accolade that we're really proud of is our um, graduate employability rate. So over 95% um, of our graduates within um, the first 15 months of study, uh, first 15 months of graduation, sorry, um, are in graduate type employment or they've gone on to do a master's programme. So where are we in Scotland? So for those of the, you that um, are familiar with the UK, um, where the heart is, um, is where um, Stirling is. So we're about 25 minutes from Glasgow, which is the largest city in Scotland, and about 40 minutes from Edinburgh, which, um, like Hilary said earlier, is the capital of Scotland. A lot of people don't know this, but Stirling was actually the ancient capital of Scotland. Um, so for those of you who are more interested in historical facts, if you have watched the film Braveheart, starring Mel Gibson, who is not Scottish, she's Australian, um, then that covers one of Scotland's national heroes, which is William Wallace. And the Wallace Monument is actually next door to our um, campus. So it's very much a historical part of Scotland. It's also known as the gateway to, Scot gateway to the Highlands. So if you're interested in hill walking, canoeing, kayaking, skiing, um, you've got easy access to the Highlands. Equally, if you're interested in looking for the Loch Ness Monster, um, it's not too far and it's easily accessible to Inverness as well. So like I said, we've got a beautiful 330 acre um, Parkland campus. This is it here. Um, and we've got everything on campus that you would need from sports facilities to teaching, library, and we've got over 2000 um, rooms in our student village. We've got a pharmacy, a doctor's surgery, um, various eateries and delis from Thai fusion to vegan um, and everything in between. And we also have our own cinema and art centre on campus. Um, and Braveheart, that film that I was talking about earlier, actually had its Hollywood premiere um, on our campus in the cinema. So that's one of our famous facts. Um, in terms of our degree program, well, it's a four year um, degree structure in Scotland, and we have one of the most flexible degree um, curriculum. So we've got five faculties, um, and we specialize in everything from arts and humanities, things like journalism, film and media, English studies, history, obviously, um, health sciences and sports. So we've got paramedic science, nursing, um, and various sports courses, as you would expect, being Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. Natural sciences, we specialise in environmental sciences, um, but we also do psychology, maths um, and computing. Social sciences, criminology, we're one of the top universities in the UK for criminology um, and various other programmes in social sciences. And last but not least, our management school has everything that you would expect. And then we specialise in things like marketing and events management as well. In terms of our entry requirements, um, as I mentioned in one of the questions earlier, we are test optional and will be test optional um, next year as well. Uh, we're looking on average for 3.0 GPA, GPA um, and obviously with undergraduate um, applications for the UK, we would expect an academic reference and also a personal statement. However, we do have three options at Stirling, so it's not just the UCAS process. We also have the Common App and we have direct applications. So there's different um, options for you. In terms of scholarships, um, we have an undergraduate scholarship, which is automatic, um, but we have a wide range of other scholarships, including Fulbright, um, sports scholarships, and saltire scholarships. So if you go onto our website, um, you can uh, pop in what you're gonna be um, studying and also where you come from, um, and it'll come back with a list of the various scholarships that's, that's on offer. Other fund funding opportunities, well, we do administer FAFSA loans and um, we also accept Sally May. Um, so there's a lot of different options for US students. In terms of tuition fees, well, Stirling is one of the least expensive cities in the UK to study. Um, so our undergraduate programmes are between about £15,000 to £17,000. So it's about twenty-one dollars to $25,000. Um, but average living costs are, are a lot lower than they are in, in other places in the UK. So we'd, we'd estimate, you know, you know, for 8,000 to, to 10,000 pounds in terms of your living costs. 
Um, you can get a part-time job, but there's plentiful job opportunities round about uh, Stirling in the city and also on campus. Accommodation, it's all guaranteed for first years. Um, there are no meal plans. It, it's all self-catered. But like I mentioned earlier, I've got a large student village, so it's very much a community spirit. If you want to get in touch, um, I love a QR code as well. You can scan that um, or just good old fashioned email. You can get in touch with me uh, directly. I'm Ali Clark. Thank you. Thank you. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from Virto Education. All right. Thanks, Catherine. I appreciate it. Um, Ali from Sterling, you've had me at a brave heart. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> Every time I hear presentations from schools in the UK, I'm like, man, I should have gone back and <laughs> done things differently. It's so great to um, hear about all these options. But I'm going to talk about Virto. Whoops. Sorry. Oh boy, this is work from home problems, huh, guys? Wish we could do this in person. Bear with me. Apologies. Uh, of course. Okay. Here we go. So it's great to be here with you all. Um, my name is Josh. I work with Virto Education. This is a little bit different. I'm going to try to do this in six minutes, but um, Catherine, feel free to just give me the wrap it up sign if I, if I drone on here. Um, what we do is represent about 66 different universities in the United States, some international partners too. Um, so for you students out there who are interested in travel, interested in learning about other cultures and, and you know just really want to see the world, this is a way for you to start college by studying abroad, start college by experiencing the world. And we do this through, again, our university partners, of which there are 66. So the way this works is students can apply through Virto and simultaneously apply to any of our partner colleges um, for free, which is great. And I won't get into the details too much here, but it does give students an advantage in admission. We also have guaranteed admission to many of our partners. The, the really short gist of it is that all of these schools you see here really value students who travel and, and value students who have international experiences. So this is a way for you guys, again, to start college by traveling the world. So a student's timeline with Virto, you apply to us just like you would apply to any university. Um, you select which partner schools you would like to apply to. And if you're accepted, you spend your first semester traveling abroad or first full year if you'd like. And then you transfer into one of our partner schools very seamlessly. Um, so it's a way for you to incorporate, again, really incredible traveling experiences into your four-year timeline, which I will talk about, I promise. Um, we've got a transfer guaranteed to about 27 of our 60 universities. So if you apply to Virto, you actually don't need to indicate interest in any partner school. You can just apply to study abroad with us. But if we do accept you, you have basically about 27, 30 colleges who have said yes to you because again, they really value students who have traveled and who just have this global perspective that all these great universities talked about today. Um, if you'd like to travel with Virto, but you're not looking to go to one of our partner colleges, you're looking to go to maybe one of these other awesome schools who presented here, um, we can help you transfer Virto credits for that first semester or year to a non-partner school. So just let us know and we'll help you figure it out is the point there. Um, okay, I'll skip that one. There are some shots from our semester abroad opportunities, which I'll go into. Um, yeah, lots of details here. I mean, our semesters, like what we really try to do is incorporate experiential learning. Um, so if you, you know, if you're taking art history with Virto for your first semester in Spain, half the time you're going out to galleries, you're going out to museums, you're going to see guest speakers, you're not sitting behind a desk. That's really the point here to help students kind of hone in what they truly want through real world experiences all the time. Um, again, knowing they're in college. I'll skip that one too, but super important. Okay, so let's talk about the semester abroad opportunities. We've got a semester in Spain. You can see the courses to that you can choose from. They're different depending on what location you choose. The point is they'll count towards gen ed elective courses. So you don't have to major in say world religion or Spanish language to study for your first semester in Spain with Berto. We really want these courses to be relevant to where you're living. Um, a lot of the semesters, actually all of them have um, built in excursions, built in trips. So you really get to experience the culture. In Spain, you can choose to live in our student residence hall or you can live with a homestay if you're really valuing and, and wanting that culturally immersive experience. We also have a semester in Italy um, with a lot of, uh, 
I think this is good for visual learners. If you're an artistic minded person, you can take beginning drawing and art history, um, even things like philosophy and astronomy, really, really cool opportunity to study that in Florence. I mean, what better place in the world than Italy to study philosophy? Um, and again, we, we take students and show them where they're living. So I think we do a visit to a place called Parma in Italy. I've really not traveled through Europe as much as I wanted to, but um, Parma is the birthplace of Parmesan cheese, I guess, which that can't be a bad thing, whatever that is. Um, student residence hall in Italy, really typical Italian style architecture. So you'll get to feel like a true citizen of Italy. And yeah, beautiful Florence there. Coffee bars are awesome there. So I've heard. Uh, London, we have a semester there too. I won't talk too much about this <laughs> because we had some great presentations on London, but if you're looking at things like business or international relations, awesome, uh, awesome opportunity to study abroad in London for a semester. And we take you to Stonehenge and Bath and all these cool places that I am not an expert in um, as much as these people presenting with me today. Okay, we have a semester in Fiji. So we have semesters in places that are not, um, I would say not so uh, well known as those major cities in Europe. So if you're looking to really get out there and see cultures that are different than your own, you can choose a semester like Fiji and you can visit um, local communities like you see here. That picture down there is one of our student groups visiting the last remaining female chief on the Fijian island. So that's like, you know, that was their anthropology class for the day. So you can see that's kind of how we approach learning. Food, don't have to tell you all here that food is the best part about traveling. So boom, there it is. <laughs> Um, and yeah, just so many cool experiences to be had in Fiji. We do a semester in Hawaii, uh, which you'll be on the big island and study things like anthropology, American music, government, sociology, anthropology. You'll spend a lot of time on the water because duh, you're in Hawaii. Um, and you'll spend a lot of time doing hikes up national parks and spending time in resorts. So bummer, right? Spending some time in resorts in Hawaii. I can't imagine why that would appeal to anybody. We also have a semester in Costa Rica, which is really cool. Super uh, comprehensive course. Uh, list to choose from. And I just want to reiterate again, guys, this is your first semester of college. So you're applying to the virtual partner colleges uh, and choosing what semester you'd like to study abroad at for your first semester. But Costa Rica, lots of options. You could take calculus, which I would have run away from in high school. But if you're of that ilk, then more power to you, go for it. Um, and lots of opportunity to ex explore Costa Rica. We do things like what you see there. Don't quite know what that's called. That gives me a little anxiety because I'm not good with heights. But if you are, again, Awesome, more power to you. Awesome, um, thank you, Josh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, no, no. Um, well, yeah, I will go ahead and stop there, but thank you, um, all great pictures and a uh, lot to do, um, especially abroad. So as things are opening back up too, um, but thank you for sharing. Um, at this time, we do have very limited time, so we'll try to squeeze in a quick Q&A here. Um, but again, thank you to all our representatives for being here. Um, we'll go ahead and try to uh, do a Q&A question here. And that is, what advice would you give someone going through the caller search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the caller search process? And if all the representatives could please turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute themselves and go ahead and answer this question in the same order in which you all presented in. Again, um, really quickly, thanks. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, I, was, I was first, uh, so I'm lucky. So I'll probably, everyone will probably have the same answer as me, but. Um, I think one thing I wish someone told me was to do research, like proper good research, like ask the tough questions and um, make the most of the people that you, you've got here like us. Um, yeah, just research, research, research. Um, and yeah, make the most of the university representatives that, that you, you get in front of. Um, I would say to really think about what you want for your university experience. Um, it's going to be your degree at the end of the day, and I'm sure lots of friends and family will provide their opinions or advice. But if you can really try to think about what's important to you, what kind of university do you want to be at, and not just the university, but the city and campus environment as well. Yeah, both of those are great. Um, I would just add to that to get in touch with all of us here because we love being able to talk to students and we are a huge resource for you as you're doing your research and starting to talk to people. So if you, we, you know, we love answering the, the big questions on the small. If you want to know where to buy 
American food, or if you want to know more about your particular course, I'd say just, yeah, make sure you reach out to, to one of our, one of the representatives like us, because we can, we can always help, even if we don't know the answer, we can find someone who can. Uh, thanks, Amanda. I think from myself, and I think, I mean, through sheer virtue of all of you kind of showing up to this talk today, you'll probably be aware, but just recognizing that studying abroad is a, a feasible option. Um, it's, uh, I mean, between us all here today, we welcome hundreds of students from the US every year and the UK itself welcomes maybe tens of, of thousands of students. Um, the UK sorry, um, welcomes tens of thousands of students from the US every year. And that's exactly why we're here to assist with, with sort of that, that transition from US high school over to the UK. Um, so I suppose that will be my piece of advice and I'll pass on to Ali. I've got two pieces of advice. So one is read the course content because two similar named courses can vary drastically. And a bit like what Hilary said, you know, you need to make sure it's the right course for you. So one might have a study abroad option, one might have a work placement. So make sure it's the right course that you're applying for. And the second thing is test drive your university because, um, you know, things have move to a virtual world and um, there's more opportunity to actually to be able to experience open days now um, and speak to people like ourselves but actually get a sort of flavour um, of, of the university rather than just looking at a web page you can actually do virtual tours and things like that so I, I would say make the most of virtual open days and MOOCs and things that are, that are out there just now. Josh. Yeah, I don't know if I have much to add. I, I'll, maybe I'll just say what, what everybody else said is probably what I would say. Um, but maybe I'll go overarching here. I think just if you're a student out there, like if a particular university or experience is calling to you, just go for it. And the nitty gritty stuff tends to work itself out. That's my um, very probably unhelpful piece of advice, but I really believe that. So just go for it and you'll be okay. And all the great advice is definitely helpful um yes go for it and we are all here's resource so uh thank you so much to our panelists um for being here for just sharing um again all great information and thank you all for joining us we have now reached the conclusion of this session but before we close um there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser if you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us your feedback is greatly appreciated Again, this is one of many college presentations being offered, so feel free to sign up for more at the same place where you registered for this one. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash college essay guy. Again, that's at strivescan.com backslash college essay guy. Thank you all and have a great night. Thank you.